praise God in the storm. It sounds very contradictory. But the word of the Lord to you is praise God in the storm. My scripture is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 10. And here is what it says. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities than that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Praise God in the storm. The word praise in Hebrew means yada. And the word yada means to revere. It means to revere God. To revere God, it means to give thanks. It means to extend the hand or to throw the hands. So sometimes you'll find that when people are praising and worshiping God, they will have their hands in the air, just praising and just giving thanks to the Lord. Praise is an act of worship, believe it or not. It is a part of what we do as our worship unto the Lord. So praise is an act of worship. It is an act of expression, expressing admiration or approval for somebody. So when you're praising God, you're expressing your admiration or your approval for God. We normally praise people when they have done something good. For instance, you're watching a soccer game, you know, a football game, and there's a good play. We usually will clap our hands and praise you know the person who had that good play or whatever when some people when i mean when the members of the team are playing well we normally will you know clap our hands or when they score a goal we get up and we clap and we cheer and we praise them it is a re proper response to when something good has, ha has happened there are people in the bible who praised god in the midst of their storm and I'm going to mention a few of the people who praise God in the midst of their storm. The scripture that I just read, which had to do with Paul, Paul said he was given an abundance on revel of revelation. And because of the abundance of revelations that was given to him, a thorn was given to him, a thorn in his flesh was given to him. This is what Paul said, 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 12, verse 7. He said, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. God had given Paul a number of divine revelation, revelation that, I mean, nobody has seen that revelation. It was given to Paul. And because of that revelation, God did not want Paul to be proud, to exalt himself. So because of the abundance of revelations that was given to him, a thorn in his flesh was given to him, a messenger of Satan to buffet him so that he will not exalt himself above measure. Paul said he prayed to the Lord three times and asked the Lord to take this thorn from his flesh. Whatever it is, the Bible doesn't tell us. We don't really know what it is. He said he prayed to the Lord three times to take this thorn from his flesh, but it didn't happen. The Lord did not take the thorn away from him. And therefore, here's what Paul said. Paul said, he said to me, when he prayed, this is what God said to him. God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God did not take the thorn away from me, but he said, I've given you enough grace to endure it. Whatever storm you're going through, God will give you enough grace to weather the storm and to go through. And because of that, Paul said, therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul said, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Paul couldn't do anything about it because the Lord would not take the thorn away from his flesh. And therefore, he had to praise God in the storm. He had to take pleasure in distresses, in persecution, in need, in reproaches. Why? Because when he is weak, then he is strong. In his weakness, the Lord becomes his strength. Praise the Lord in the storm. Somebody else praised God in the storm. Again, let's look at Paul again. Paul and uh, Paul praised God in his storm. Paul and Silas, they also had a situation. Paul and Silas were preaching the word of God. They were, I mean, according to Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas were doing what they know to do, preach the gospel, lead souls to the Lord, and they were doing what they knew to do. But according to the word of the Lord in Acts chapter 16, there was this slave girl who kept following Paul and Silas, and she kept saying, these are the men of the Most High who show us the way of salvation. So they were behind Paul, and they were saying, these are the men of God who show us the way of salvation. This is uh, Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 here. And I'm reading from um, uh, verse, I'm looking at Acts chapter 16, verse 16. It says, now it happened as he went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and Silas and cried out, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. You know what? When you read at the script, when you read this scripture for the first time, what comes to mind is the girl didn't do anything wrong. She was saying, Hey, people, listen to Paul and Silas because they are they are servants of the most high God. They are here to show us the way of salvation. If anything, you would think the girl was doing the right thing. But the girl had a spirit of divination, and she was speaking through that spirit of that spirit of divination was working through her. So Paul, being that he had the spirit of discernment, realized that the spirit that was operating through the girl was not the right spirit. And she let this went on for some time. But after a while, she turned around and she rebuked that spirit, and she said, "I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her." So the spirit left the girl. And guess what? This girl used to fortune tell. The job that she was doing was doing fortune telling. And she was making money for her masters. But now that that spirit had been cast away from her, she cannot do her fortune telling anymore. That means the money that she was bringing to her masters was gone. The money was gone through the window. They could not make that money any longer. Do you think the masters were going to be happy? No. They were not happy. So they dragged Paul and Silas to the marketplace, to the authorities, and said, this men, this men are this men are Jews, and they're teaching us, they're giving us wrong customs. They are troubling our city, and they teach us customs which are not rightful for us as Romans. They went and they complained against Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were given some stripes. They were beaten. And after they were beaten, they were thrown into jail. And they were locked up in chains. If it was you and I, we probably would be complaining. We'll be saying, God, I did the right thing. And here am I suffering for doing the right thing. What do you do when you do the right thing and it backfires? When you do what God has told you to do and it backfires and it starts suffering, what do you do? I tell you what Paul and Silas did. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. He said, but at midnight, now they were in jail now. They were in chains with all the prisoners. He says, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Paul and Silas were entertaining the prisoners in jail. When other people will be complaining and whining and bickering and saying, God, I did what you asked me to do. And look at my suffering. Look at, my, look at me. Look at that suffering. God, what are you doing about this? No, not Paul and Silas. They were singing hymns. They were praising God. Praise God in the storm. There is power in praise, children of God. There is power in praise, my brothers and sisters. And as they were praising God in the jail, in the prison, guess what happened? Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's chain were loosed. Paul 
and Silas were able to praise God in the midst of their storm. They didn't complain. They didn't whine. They sang praises. They sang hymns to shame the devil and to say, hey, here we are still praising God in spite of. God is saying to you, you're struggling to praise God because you felt you, you're feeling like some injustice has been dealt to you. You're struggling to praise the Lord because you feel like God has disappointed you. You're struggling to give God thanks because you feel things are not going the way you expected them to go. But today, the word of the Lord to you is praise God in the midst of the storm. Let's look at another person who praised God in the midst of their storm. And they had no reason to praise God, but they did. Let's look at Brother Job. I'm sure most of you have heard the story of Job. We're looking at Job, the book of Job, chapter 1. Turn with me to Job, chapter 1. According to the word of the Lord, it says that Job got a bad report. Job was a righteous man, somebody who loved the Lord. He was a righteous man. And one day, one of his servants came running to him. And he said to him, the Sabians raided all the oxen and donkeys. And they killed all the servants. He said, I'm the only one left to run. I'm the only one left who has run to come and tell you the story. How would you feel to know that your enemies had raided all your animals and all your oxen and your donkeys, all your animals, and have killed all your servants? You're not going to be throwing your hands and praising God. No, you're going to be wondering, God, where were you when they did that? God, why, why didn't you do anything about it? And as the servant was talking, guess what? Another servant runs and come by. He says, hey, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up all your sheep and all your servants were killed. I'm the only one who was able to escape, to run and to tell the story. All your sheep are gone. A fire from heaven fell and burned them out. Not only that, all the servants are killed. Hey, he was listening to but one bad report. I'm sure he hadn't even digested it. There goes another one. As if that wasn't enough. A third one came. A third servant came running. He says the Chaldeans formed three bands. The Chaldeans formed three bands and raided all your camels and killed all your servants. I'm the only one left who has run to come and tell you the story. It doesn't get it better. As they say, when it rains, it pours. This is the third report. I don't know how Brother Job was feeling by this time. And on top of all that, somebody else ran and came to Job and said, Job, your children were having party in their older brother's house. Your sons and daughters were having a party in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a wind came across from the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people. All of them are dead. This is Job chapter one, verse 18. It says, while he was still speaking, Another came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on the young people and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. What are you going to do when you get my report? According to the word of the Lord, in verse 20, after all these bad reports, here is Job's response. Verse 20, then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. Hey, how do you worship God when you're going through a storm? It is not easy to worship God when you're going through a storm. It takes the grace of God and the power of God and the anointing of God for you to be able to even thank him when you're going through a storm. But he says, Job worshipped. And Job said, he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord giveth and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Naked I came from my mother's womb. This is Job chapter 1 verse 20. Naked and verse 21. Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 
praised God in the storm. God is saying to you, you're struggling to praise him because the storm, you're going through the storm right now and you're struggling to praise the Lord. But God is saying, praise me because praise will lift you up. Praise will give you the breakthrough you need. Praise me. Not only when things are going uh, great, but even when things are not going well, still praise me. Let's look at another person, a last person who praised God in the midst of their storm. David. What about David? Second Samuel chapter 12. David committed adultery with Bathsheba. And after he did that, he also killed Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. And of course, Bathsheba became his wife and a child was conceived during that act during during the act of uh, adultery a child was conceived but according to the word of the lord the lord struck that child and the child became sick second samuel chapter 12 and david prayed that god would heal the child david fasted and prayed he wouldn't eat his servants brought him food but he wouldn't eat he would need because he wanted God to heal the child. But according to the word of the Lord, the Lord did not heal the child. This is found in 2 Samuel chapter 12. The Lord did not heal the child. So one day David heard his servant murmuring. I mean, after the child was dead, the servants was thinking, you know, how do we bring this report to David? When David was alive, he wouldn't even listen to us. He wouldn't eat. He was fasting and praying for the healing of the child. Now that the child is dead, if we go to tell him, what do you think is going to do to himself? So they were whispering and David heard it. And David asked them, David said, is the child dead? And they said to him, yes, the child is dead. So 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20, he says, after he got that report, David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. And he went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he went to his own house. And when he requested, they set food before him and he ate. David worshiped the Lord after the child was dead because he knew that the child will not come to him but one day he will go and meet the child where he was again we see david praising god in the midst of the storm the bible says in romans chapter 15 verse 4 it says the things that were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope the Bible has recorded all these things that we will learn from our forefathers, from the people of ancient, ancient days, what they did, that we will learn from them so that through the comfort and through the patience of scriptures, we will have hope. So whatever things are written here after our learning, hallelujah, I give you a few reasons why you and I ought to praise the Lord. One. We have to praise the Lord. Why? Because the Bible commands it. It is a command. Praising the Lord is a command. It's not a choice. It's not if or but. It is a command from the Lord. And let's see that in Psalm 117. Psalm 117, shortest psalm in the Bible. Here is what it says. Psalm 117. Here is what it says. It says, let it says, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord him, all you people, everybody on the face of the earth. Lord the Lord, praise him, lift him up, magnify him, exalt his holy name. Verse 2, praise him, why? For he's merciful, he is merciful. It says, for his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endures. Praise the lord why do we have to praise the lord because the bible commands it and therefore because the bible commanded it we need to obey the word of the lord number two why do we need to praise the lord in our storm because praise is an effective weapon against the devil in isaiah chapter 14 we read that Satan was kicked out of heaven and doomed for destruction due to his desire to be like god Ever since then, Satan had hated worship. See, remember Lucifer, he was one of the most beautiful angels in heaven. 
but he wanted to be like God. He wants to rub shoulders with God. And because of that, he was thrown out of heaven. And because of that, he hates worship. And therefore, whenever you and I worship, guess what it does? It reminds Satan of what he lost that he couldn't gain back. Praise remind Satan of what he has lost and can't regain. And therefore, when we praise, it's a powerful weapon against the enemy. He knows that he can regain his position in heaven. And yet God has put his spirit in us. And God sees us valuable. And there he is thrown out of his position, thrown out of his he heaven. And we are valued by God. Hallelujah. Praise is a powerful weapon against the enemy. It reminds the devil of what he lost that he can't regain. Third point why we should praise the Lord. When we praise the Lord, it takes the focus off us and puts it on God. Praise takes the focus off us and puts it on God and it keeps despair away. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3. What does it say? It says, to console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beautiful ashes. When we praise the Lord, he gives us beautiful ashes. Hallelujah. Praise is a powerful tool against the, the devourer, the accuser of the brethren. It's a powerful tool against Satan. It says to give them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. When you praise the Lord, God gives you joy. Instead of mourning, you receive joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength and my strength. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. When we praise the Lord, he gives us the oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. When we praise the Lord, he gives us beauty for ashes. When we praise the Lord, we become like the planting of the Lord that he, God, might be glorified. Praise takes the focus of us. Because when we're going through the storm, it's all about me, myself, and I. Look at what I'm going through. Look at what people did to me. Look at the suffering I'm going through. Nobody knows the trouble I have been. Yes, Jesus knows the trouble you've been through. And he's there for you. He will not turn his back on you. So praise takes the focus off us and puts it on God and keeps despair away. Fourth reason why we should praise the Lord Praise facilitates access to God. Psalm 104 verse 3. It says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So praise facilitates access to God. Hallelujah. It makes us enter into his gate. When we praise the Lord, we, we are supposed to enter his gate with thanksgiving, not enter into his gate with complaining and whining and, and crying. He says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, even though you're going through a storm. Hallelujah. So when you do that, it facilitates access to God's presence. Fifth reason why we should praise God. Praise God because he alone is worthy of our praise. Let's see what the psalmist had to say about that. Psalm 145 and verse 3. Here's what it says. Psalm 145 and verse 3. It says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Nobody can search the ways of God. His ways are past understanding. His ways are unsearchable. Praise the Lord. Why? Praise the Lord in the storm. Why? Because he alone is worthy of our praise. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. So child of God, my brother, my sister, when you're going through the storm, praise the Lord. Because he's greatly to be praised. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. The sixth reason why we should praise God in our storm. Praise God. Because he is always, always, always faithful. Praise the Lord because he is faithful. Here is how Timothy puts it. Timothy said in the book of Timothy, <coughs> in the book of Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13, 
let's see what timothy has to say about god's faithfulness hallelujah god is faithful I'm sure you have you've heard that before and today i'm reminding you again that god is faithful second timothy chapter 2 verse 13 it says if we are faithless he remains faithful hallelujah if you and i choose to be faithless he cannot deny himself it is his attribute it is his nature it is his nature he remains faithful he cannot deny himself so praise the Lord in the storm, not because things are going good for you, not because everything is dilly-dally and rosy. No, praise the Lord even in the storm. And if you choose to be faithless and not praise him, he still will remain faithful. Hallelujah. Because he cannot deny himself. Saints of God, are you going through a storm? My brother, my sister, are you going through a storm? Today, the word of the Lord to you is praise God in the midst of your storm. Hallelujah. Stand upon the word of God, which says, praise me. The word of God, which says, God is faithful. You might think it's not faithful, but he's saying to you, I am faithful. And if you choose to remain faithless, I still will be faithful because I cannot deny myself. We've seen examples of people who praise God in the midst of the storm. Paul praised God when he was giving the thorn in his flesh. He was only doing what he knows to do. He was giving a thorn in his flesh as messenger of Satan to buffet him. He didn't complain. He praised God. You can praise God in your storm. Paul and Silas were thrown in jail for casting a demon out of a slave girl, a girl who was fortune telling, doing fortune telling. Fortune telling is demonic. Christians has no business going to see fortune tellers or palm readers it is demonic when you do that you open the door for spirits and for for attack in your life when you go and see um when you go see a, a palmist or a fortune teller or all those things it opens the door for the enemy to attack you so paul and silas rebuked that spirit that was using the girl and you know what that was a crime they committed they were thrown in jail for that but what did they do? At midnight, they were praising the Lord, singing hymns, and that caused an earthquake to happen. Praise the Lord in the midst of your storm. Job, his oxen was taken away from him. His donkeys were taken. His sheep were burned. His camels were raided. His children were all killed. And on top of it, he had boils all over his body. But according to the word of the Lord, Job did not Job did not complain. He did not complain against God and, and, and bicker and laid any charge against the Lord. Job did not do that. Here, Job chapter 1, verse 22. It says, In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. He didn't blame God and say, God, it's your fault. God, why did you do this? He did not sin by blaming God. Are you going through a storm? I pray in the name of Jesus that God will give you the strength to be able to praise him in the midst of the storm because the Bible commands you and I to praise him in the midst of our storm. Praise the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will be able to praise the Lord in the midst of your storm because praise is an effective weapon against the evil one. I pray that you'll be able to praise the Lord in the midst of the storm that you're going through right now as you're hearing me. Why? Because praise takes the focus off you. It takes the focus off you whereby you're not feeling sad anymore, but you're looking to God, his power and his strength, what he has done before and what he can do again. So if you're able to praise him in the midst of the storm, the focus will be taken off you and place on God because it's all about God, not about you. I pray you'll be able to praise God in the midst of your storm. Why? Because God alone is worthy of our praise. Not because he's blessing us with abundance. Whether he's blessing us or not, he still remains God. And we ought to give him praise because he alone is worthy of the praise. Praise God. Another reason. Praise God because he come for the seventh reason. Praise God because he comforts us when we're going through tough times. Praise God because he comforts us. That's the seventh reason. Praise God because he comforts us when we're going through tough times. Psalm 30 and verse 11, 
It says, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. When you praise the Lord, he will turn your sadness into rejoicing. He will turn your mourning into dancing. Hallelujah. Believe it or not, it is true. The Lord will turn your sadness. I mean, when you begin to praise the Lord, all of a sudden, you're not even thinking of the problems and the challenges you're going through because the focus is taken off you and the focus is placed on God. Hallelujah. So praise God in the midst of your storm. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Here is what it says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4, I just read. God will comfort you so that you will be able to comfort others who are going through a storm with the comfort that you yourself have received. Praise God in the midst of the storm because the Bible commands it. Because praise is a powerful weapon against the enemy. Because praise takes the focus of us and puts it on God. Because praise facilitates access to God. Because praise, God alone is worthy of our praise. Praise God also because God is always faithful. And praise the Lord in your storm finally because God is able to comfort you in the midst of your storm that you will comfort others. The word of the Lord has come to you. Get up your loins. Shake off the spirit of heaviness. God will turn your mourning into dancing when you begin to praise him. Hallelujah. The storm will calm down and you will be able to put your focus on God. Hallelujah. And hear from God. God will bring you through. Praise God in the midst of the storm. Shalom.